And I grew up on Canal Street, you know. Uh, my family's been in Chinatown for like, um, like 40 years. And I started hanging out in Columbus Park when I was like three years old. After preschool, probably come here, my parents would take me here and like we'd just hang out. And through the years, you know, started riding my bike, broke my butt on these stairs, and then, you know, played basketball behind me, hung out with my friends in. I was about 13 years old when I started, like, riding uh, bikes, you know, like, but all my friends were rollerblading. They were all doing the tricks and everything. I just wanted to fit in, so I, but I didn't want to do rollerblades, so I went on my bike. So they used to uh, tag along the back, you know, we used to ride around these streets over here, you know, like causing mad traffic. I've seen it from its like worst days. My dad probably had the worst days. And then like now it's pretty good over the last 10 years. It's, it's amazing the growth has uh, gone through, you know, like it, it's taken a lot of steps to being a much better community and not known for violence. It's great now. Like a lot more tourists come here to check it out. All the markets and the shopping, eating, and just hanging out, having your dim sum. A lot of gangs, you know? Um, Back in the days, like, each block had a different gang, you know, like 13 gangs in Chinatown, you know, all going for the same territory, you know, and, and then, like, 50% of, uh, what are this, uh, stats and facts that I've read, I guess, and, you know, 50% of, like, heroin has gone through Chinatown. Like, and back in the, in the 70s, like, that was crazy, like, how much money was involved doing that, and, you know, and now, it's not, there's, you don't see any of it. You know, like all the big bosses have been gone to jail, you know, some ran away with the money, <laughs> you know, like, but you couldn't walk down these streets, like, every block somebody's staring at you, or you look the wrong way or something, like, they start with you. To try to get out of that, you know, I focused on food, you know, I focused on going to Kung Fu classes, you know, self-defense, you needed that. But I take Dragon Style Kung Fu and I'm, I'm still taking it. Without it, back in the day, that you know, being jumped by somebody or, you know, you, you were your friends and then they start something. I was playing basketball here, you know, one time and we were shooting for teams and then I was behind this guy and then another friend came over, tapped him on the shoulder while he was shooting. And then he missed the shot. I didn't touch him, but the guy turned around and put a knife on me. And I'm like, whoa. And it's like, I'm not a troublemaker, you know. And, but like you have to stand on your own two feet, you know, you have to just deal with it. So sometimes you gotta show no fear. I tell you a story about my dad, you know, like, um, like he, he had a store he opened up and, you know, three different gangs came into the store and like they all came in with automatic guns, you know, like, and, and said, oh, I want this money. Oh, my dad said, no, I'm here every day, you know. You kill me, you know, but I'm not giving you money, you know. And, and, and then he's like, oh, go tell your Dai Lo, you know, to come get the money himself. My dad used to carry guns on him, you know. He had one here, one on the ankle, you know. He had a license for it, you know. But, you know, like it was that dangerous back then. I couldn't believe he stand his ground. And then he saw, he saw the, the gangsters, like, high five him and probably <laughs> gave them good deals. <laughs> <laughs> that time they were just scared, you know, of whoever, because little kids were gangsters, man. They they recruiting from like sixth grade. I I remember going to PS 124, and then uh, I see some kids being asked to join gangs, and they got beat up because you know they didn't want to join. The older kids, they were junior high school probably, like high school kids beating up elementary school kids. You know, like that's crazy, I, and I'm glad like. I never was a part of that. I always, I was trying to be smart. I walk out 
of school with my friends, you know, um, you know, and you try to go a different exit sometimes, you know, or you go to that. And then my parents, you know, they really helped us by like letting us uh, go to the after school programs, you know, like you learn Chinese or something, you know, and you stay in school. Like most uh, public schools let you out at three o'clock, you know, and that time I stayed in school until six in the after school program. Ever since I was a little kid, it's been my dream to be a chef. I don't know why. I mean, my parents, they, they, sell, they, they sell professional sound equipment at high five, like radios and stuff. And then like, I'm more into cooking. I guess, uh, you know, being in a diverse culture, you know, in America, New York especially, you know, the melting pot, you know, the, you know, people's aspirations are so different. You know, you have so many interests. And, but I was surrounded by food in Chinatown. You know, that's what uh, got me out of the violence. It helped me focus like, on a career and not be you know, swarmed by all the negativity that uh, you know, growing up had, had come to my attention. Yeah, I opened uh, the restaurant, uh, Hip Hop Chow. You know, for two years I had it. You know, like, um, and now I, it's closed since, uh, but you know, I, now that I'm married, you know, um, now I got this catering business. Now, now it's hip hop child catering. You know, um, it, it's much uh, better balance. I get to do my kung fu again. You know, it was great. You know, my and my inspiration is drawn from growing up in Chinatown. But having the restaurant, it was definitely a lot of hard work. You know, I put 100 hours a week in it. You know, like 115. I start. Uh, you know, I wake up 6:30 in the morning, out the door by seven you know, grocery shopping till like 10, you know, get back to the restaurant, start prepping, and then uh, open lunch 12, close at four to five, make a lot of reservations, phone calls, order, you know, and then dinner service, and then after dinner service, clean it all up, you know, and then sometimes, you know, I have to run up and down to, be a manager, like, you know, the POS system. I had to do, I'm not my own accountant. I'm my own PR. Oh my God, I threw out the garbage. I cleaned the bathroom. We'd have these like pajama nights and, and, and like we were like 13 years old. And we like just walk around the streets in the pajamas, and we put like these orange peels in our mouth and walk into like I walk by the windows of each restaurant and just smile, <laughs> like acting like stupid kids. That's where I grew up, Chinatown. You know, I love it.